Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we are covering Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 22. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me clarity to speak and the hearer the ear to hear. Impart on us, please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways that we may walk upright before you. Uh, help us to share your word with others in clarity and in truth. In Jesus' name, we ask all these things. Amen. Okay, so grab your Bibles and turn with me to Matthew 21. I'm reading from the New King James Version, uh, verses 1 through 22. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says to you, you shall, uh, you shall, if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Uh, then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who brought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants? You have perfected praise. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and he lodged there. Now in the, now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry and seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, If you say to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word. Let it fill us up until we are able to eat of it again. If you're just here for scripture read-through, thank you. For coming to read through scripture with me. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you again next time. If you're here for a more in-depth Bible study, stick around and we will dive right in. So chapter 21 is, uh, we're picking, uh, this is the final week. We, we're getting close to Jesus' death. Um, this is uh, Palm Sunday, the Sunday before uh, Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. Uh, if you've ever heard Palm Su Sunday, we're about to find out what took place that uh, that day. In preparation so. for... Uh, this fulfillment of scripture um, in 21, 1 through 11, Jesus gives his disciples instructions on um, going to get this, uh, the cult of a, uh, the foal of a donkey yeah. so that he can, um, they'll lay palm branches and uh, it's like a little parade where he'll sit on the, because uh, he's the king. So he'll sit on the cult and, 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 and walk down, uh, I'm sorry, ride on the uh, donkey and the people will Shout out praises to the Lord, um, and it is to fulfill, uh, so in time past, in Zechariah 9, verse 9, is this the scripture that he quotes here and said, saying um, all these things, not quote, he's saying that all the things that is in for, for, sorry, for all this uh, was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, and then five is the quote, that is from Zechariah 9 and 9. So Zechariah if the, uh, was saying, hey, these things will happen when the one to come, the Savior of the world, uh, uh, comes. 
He, he will ride on the colt of the donkey the, till the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And so he does that and fulfills that um, scripture there. So the people are crying out um, for this parade for, for the Lord, Hosanna. Um, and the uh, word Hosanna means to save now. But um, Luke, the gospel of Luke, Luke adds more in Luke uh, chapter 19, 33 through 40. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that these should keep, uh, if, that if these should keep st silent, the stones would immediately cry out. So he can't stop the praise. He is exerting his um, Godship head here um, from the, the people from praising him, calling him, uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, so uh, to save them. Uh, so... Uh, that is an extra piece of the story that we will uh, go more uh, in detail in Luca, I suppose. Uh, I just wanted to add that tidbit of information. I'm mm -hmm. quoting for, from uh, Dr. R.C. Sproul's commentary on uh, the book of Matthew from page 556. And he gives us a visual of what the entryway would have looked like that Jesus is about to enter down in verses 12. Let's say it's uh, just 12 uh, and 13. All right. So um, Jesus entered the temple complex by passing through a massive gate that led into a series of courts. Uh, one of the outermost of these courts was the court of the Gentiles. It was there, not in the temple itself or even in its immediate uh, vicinity, that he encountered people exchanging currency and selling animals. Uh so that that is the uh so he wasn't like exactly inside of the temple but um so the uh the f Jesus arrived in Jerusalem I was going to continue on with uh with his description so I won't just keep pausing and saying uh uh uh, uh. the city had just begun the week long celebration of Passover so they're celebrating Passover and then uh Dr. Spro actually quotes Josephus. Josephus is a historian, a Jewish historian, and he tells us that millions of people from all over Rome would pour into Jerusalem each year to celebrate the annual feast. So that this small city, uh, okay, so a brief summary of all of this, because it goes on for quite some time, uh, is that um, they have to do money exchange. You know, when you go to a foreign country, you have to do money exchange. And some people who were coming to uh, celebrate the Passover needed to purchase an animal for sacrifice. And so um, they hiked up the prices. You know how you go to a... Uh, uh, like a baseball game or football game. And when you go downtown in your city to go to these games, um, uh, everything's way more expensive. It's, it's just insane how, how much they hike up the price. Even a bottle of water can cost you like $7, up, upward of $7. So, um, and Jesus was like not having it in the house of the Lord. And that, that's what angered him. Uh, so that is the scene and Jesus is like super, super it, 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 uh, upset because he says down in uh, verse 13, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And uh, in the gospel of John, John even adds that he made a whip, a whip of cords and kind of just like drove them out. He didn't hit anyone, in, you know, just kind of in a, in a threatening manner. He didn't say it. He just was angry of what was going on. This is the house of prayer. This is what this is for. This is not for you to sell doves that are, uh, uh, and, and uh, you've made it a, uh, a den of thieves. You, you're stealing from uh, the house of the Lord. This is not what the Lord, the house of the Lord should be about. It's not about monetary. It's about coming in, being able to pray. It's a house of prayer. It's a, a house of fellowship and praise to the Lord. So Jesus had every right to be upset and um, uh, knock over the tables. He did, he, 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 he did not sin. He didn't hit anyone. He just did not like what was going on. He was God. He can, um, he, he has the right to, uh, use his authority here and to say what should or should not be going on in the house of the Lord. Um, and then immediately afterwards in verse 14, he shows them what you should really supposed to be doing in there. <laughs> Blind men and lame, of course, uh, we can't heal blind uh, and lame men uh, in this day. 
but uh, they came into the temple and he healed them. Uh, but when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, the children crying out, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant at him saying, do you hear what he's saying? So they don't care that he just healed them. They only care what the people are saying. He, they, they, they literally hateful. And it is not strange to see this hate going on today. We don't have the authority to heal, but anything that the church does good doesn't count. It's only uh, if anybody within the church sins. That's what they blast across the news to get people to uh, turn away from the Lord. Okay, so uh, the, the quote from verse 16, out of the mouth of babes and nursing, nursing infant, infants, you have perfected praise, comes from Psalm 8 and 2. I had to pause and kind of look that up. Sorry about that. Uh, then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and he lodged there. So he just leaves and he goes to a completely different city and stays there. Uh, I'm not sure if he left because he was just so angry <laughs> for everything that just happened. Uh, but that, that's what happened. So in the morning, down in verse 18, so verses 18 through 22, uh, this is where he curses the fig tree. And I also want to put that in a proper setting because I know that Muslims are uh, use this verse to try to say that uh, Jesus cursed nature. He just was like a kid having a fit and just... You know, oh, this this tree doesn't have food that's good for me, and it curses the tree and it withers away. Uh, there is a reason why he cursed that tree. It was not going to bear any fruit at all. Okay, so, so yeah. according to the great archaeologist Dr. Kelso, um, this fig tree that the Lord curses. Uh, let me back up. Sorry. Verse. 20, 21 and 18. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. So he is going back into the city. He left um, after all of the events, the uh, parade of him sitting on the donkey, and then uh, his uh, altercation with the scribes and the Pharisees. He's, he's healed a couple people, and now we, he, he leaves the city. And um, oh, he uh, the whips, the cursing of the... Uh, uh, not cursing the uh he turns over the tables and he drives out the money changers uh so the next day in the morning he returns to the city he was hungry 19 seeing a fig tree by the road he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves so, so the way that dr sproul uh describes it is that he responded that, that jesus responds on cursing the fig tree uh first let's read what jesus says 19 and seeing a fig tree by the road he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it let no fruit grow on you ever again immediately the fig tree withered away uh and when the disciples saw it they marveled saying how did the fig tree wither away so soon uh, so um i just just finish it up so jesus answered and said to them surely i say to you no 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 let's not finish it up sorry i don't want to jump ahead today because i had something to say after that um so he responded by, uh, and this is the commentary, of Dr. Sproul, 563. We, he, he, Dr. Sproul actually is the one that says that he had the opportunity to work under and study under three great archaeologists, but that Dr. Kelso is the one that said that that tree should have had figs on it. So he's given an object lesson here. He responded by doing something that was commonplace in the prof prophetic uh, tradition of old testament israel he used that moment to give a dramatic prophetic object lesson a parable not in words but in actions he pronounced judgment on the tree declaring that it would never bear never again bear fruit under the power of that divine curse the tree withered and died so jesus um he didn't curse the tree just out of having a, a fit he did it in order to make a statement about what was going on all around him in the city of Jerusalem at that point. In other words, this was an object lesson and his point was simple. It was a picture of God's judgment on hypocrisy. He was pretending the truth was uh, 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 of being a hypocrite. It, it was there. It had all of the leaves on it, but it was producing no fruit. It, it was not doing what it was meant to do. So he cursed it and uh, it withered. Uh, the tree withered and died. Then he goes... After that, Jesus responds to the disciples because they, they're marveled. They're saying, how did the, the, the fig tree, they were astonished by this thing. Jesus responds to them for that question. He says, surely I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, 
But also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive, you will receive. Again, this is not a magic trick here. This is not something we should look at and say, see, it says, whatever you believe you're going to receive, just say it, you're going to receive it. That's not the gospel. That is magic. You're looking for a magic trick. Um, there is not been one mountain that has been cast in the sea, uh, be it being removed and cast in the sea since Jesus made this. The disciples didn't respond here. We don't see anything that tells us that they said, you know, oh, well, let me see. Move the mountain. That would be them just practicing magic. We see that in superhero films. You know, when they first get their powers, they want to see how powerful and what they can do with their... No, Jesus, that's, this is the holy word of the Lord God here, um, guys. He's given a, a, a lesson about faith. So I want to quote Dr. Sproul again because he says it's so much better than I, but I don't want to read through. It's like pages of pages. So I'm just going to find the direct quote. So here. I found the quote. Uh, it is page 565 in the commentary from Dr. R.C. Sproul's book on Matthew. Uh, when Jesus said, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive, he was clearly making a, hypo a hyperbolic statement. There are people who say that if we believe something can happen, it will happen by the strength of our belief. Prayer is the most powerful force at our disposal, but it is not magic. When Jesus taught about prayer here, must what Jesus taught about prayer here must be understood in light of everything else that he taught about prayer. He was not saying that if we ask anything, believing in his name, it will happen. But he was encouraging his people to run from indolence, to be bold, to be daring, to attempt those things that few people ever dreamt of attempting. Like um, when we pray and we uh, just ongoing praying, prayer, uh, how hospitals were built, the uh, abolition of slavery uh, came on the heel of Christians and prayer. Uh, uh, Let's see what else. Well, just you, prayer can move a mountain. Just continuously pray to the Lord and know the three answers to those prayers. Yes, no, because it could be no. Um, so there's there's clearly a, a no. No can be an answer. So sorry. No can be an answer because we clearly see that Jesus prays to the Father. If all things could be done, if, if we take this out of context, then why did Jesus have to drink the cup and die for the sins of the world? That was the will of the Father. That was Jesus' whole purpose of coming, was to die, to be the lamb, the sacrificial lamb for the sins of the world. So even though in that moment he felt the weight of, of what he had to go through and he didn't, you know, he... He was like, if, trying to see if there was another way. So, But the, the, the Father clearly said no. So... um it's not it's not a magic trick it's not something that we should say you know oh i'm gonna pray for this i saw these new shoes i, I really want them i think i deserve them just just anything like that um or it couldn't be it, it doesn't have to be materialistic it could be healing um or uh, a bad time in life or just constant struggling or if you're tired of uh, being treated a certain way or uh in a dire situation um some people call or call to suffer. Some people, some people die and are killed um, in the midst of suffering. And uh, like John the Baptist was beheaded at a birthday party. Can we explain why he wasn't let out? He was literally serving the Lord. It is not God who deemed that evil upon him. It was Herod and um, Herodias. Uh, and they, they did that to John. So it's easy for us to look at the Lord and say that the Lord has put me through these things. Uh, while it, it happens, the Lord does promise us something that vengeance is his. The Lord tells us in scripture, vengeance is mine. Right after he says that, right after he says that, the next words he says is that I will repay what people do will not go unpunished. The The Lord has wrath. You will not get away with anything. We see what David did. Although David was a man after uh, God's own heart, if you haven't went through the uh, the the, uh, the Bible of, uh, on the book of David, 
David had his friend Uriah killed. Um, so the, and he slept with his wife and, and Uriah was an upright man. The sword did not leave his house. So he couldn't escape the punishment of what he did. Uh, his next son that he, him and him, him and Bathsheba had together passed away. And I'm sorry if I'm sketchy with uh, ex, uh, explaining it because I'm trying to get to a point quickly here. <laughs> um, but uh, because I don't want to... I don't want anybody to have false expectations on prayer because um, those things can't happen. And I'm not saying that we are always going to suffer. Uh, people, I, you know, I want my cake. I want my pie. I want it now. I, everything I want now. And here in scripture is laid out for the, that we are to, um, heaven is something to come after, after passing away. Although we will, we will have good seasons here. Uh, and when the Lord blesses us, he will open up the heavens and, and, and bless his servants. Um, but, but, but not all the time we will struggle. We will go through certain things and it is not, uh, the Lord, the, the, the hope is in the, the, the world to come. We, you, we will surely pass away. Do not be deceived. Uh, the trickery and the things that this world offers, um, youth beauty all those things are will pass away you will grow old if the lord lets you linger here <laughs> um and and pass away death is real and it is certain and uh we have hope in jesus christ and it is not true because i believe it true it's true because it's it's true it's the truth. It's the truth. I didn't write this. <laughs> this is the holy book of the Lord. It is the truth. It is how the world came to being. It's like one plus one is, is two. It's, it's the truth. It's the absolute truth. Um, and this is what we have to hope in. Um, so um, don't think that uh, the Lord doesn't care if you're praying. Uh, just continuously pray. Have faith uh, until an answer comes. If you, you'll know, say, you know, you can ask the Lord, is it no? If it, if it is no, you can pray things. I know I pray uh, constantly to take the desire away. Lord, if this not your will, please remove the desire. He, he's done that for me in the past. Uh, remove the desire that I, something I desire to do with my life. I used to want to be a singer. And uh, uh, I, I asked the Lord, Lord, if this isn't the, uh, what I'm, I should do, just take the desire away because I wanted it so bad. I wanted to be it. And he literally took the desire away. I, I like to sing and uh, I, I really love music to this day. But that desire, it's, it's never returned. It's, <laughs> he really took it away. So um, I hope that it was, uh, uh, all of this was helpful. Sorry about rambling on there, guys. I, uh, I, I just don't like those pastors who preach about receiving things and money and what you should have now and name it and claim it and, cl and claim this in the name of the Lord. You can't, they can't even do it. They're, they're lying to you and they're deceiving you so that you can give more to them and they're lying causes. You know, you don't give to the Lord to get something back. That's gambling. You go to the casino if you want something like that. Um, and good luck with the odds with that uh, even, uh, when, when you come to the Lord and you give your tithes, this to because of the preacher, he works, you know, he should be going through scripture, putting together these lessons, and he should be, be there for us to go and talk to uh, the churches, the community. Um, uh, the, it's the house of prayer, like Jesus just said, what it's for. When people get hungry and they're down on their luck, where do you go? Where, where, where do people send people to the church? to the pantry to get food from the church. Of course, they have places like the Salvation Army or whatnot. Um, but most of the time, people go to the church for their help. So um, I, 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 I keep staggering on, and I am so sorry about that. Uh, I really do hope that this was a means of blessings to a blessing to you, as it is to me. Uh, yeah, that's it. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forevermore. Until next time, guys, thanks for coming to study scripture with me. Bye. <laughs>